Gene, yeah. how long have we known each other? Uh, about what? Twelve years. Twelve years. Something like that. You know, there's something you don't know about me. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you now if you want me to. I would love to know. <laughs> uh, in my um, early twenties, I was a talented asshole. <laughs> I lost... Yeah, I was a talented asshole, Gene. I don't believe it. You know what changed? Did you? I'm not talented anymore. <laughs> 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 That's a that was a long setup. No, but it's <laughs> true, man. That's the thing. It was like when I wrote that uh, issue of the newsletter last week, I was like going, shit, all of these things on this checklist, it's kind of me. <laughs> so when did you realize in your professional career that you weren't really talented? Hey, hey, whoa, 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 that I was an asshole. I was always talented, <laughs> jerk. Oh, my God. Who's the asshole now? I'm trying to play the part. <laughs> no, I was a. Uh, I don't so, do subtlety as well as you. Oh yeah, and you do pretty good. Okay, thank you. You do pretty good. Um, so <laughs> figure, you know, I did the theater thing, all that shit. Um, mm -hmm. going in and realizing that I wanted to have more of a career, that I wasn't going to be great at theater, mm -hmm. and decided I would just, you know, get good at presenting in business situations. So I became really good at getting clients to say yes and getting approvals mm -hmm. within about a round and a half of revisions. Like I could take a first round of something to a client and come back with some modifications, not changes, just like alter some stuff. And so I started sitting with art directors and writers and I, I was the only account service person who was back in the art department all the time. Cause I would ask him, why does this work? Mm -hmm. Why did you do this? What, what do you think this is the impact of this will be? Hmm. Right. And then I would take that and know what I knew about the clients and what their goals were. Gotcha. And I would marry them. And I would say, the reason why this is going to help you accomplish this increase in your closing rate is because it's going to make people understand that this is an emotional win for them, hmm. that they're going to be able to put their money here, still have access to it, whatever it might be. Um, because we had a lot of banking clients. So it was always about, you know, am I going to make money? Am I going to this, that? Right, and right. Let's put pool water on the envelope and people will think, ooh, I'm going to build a pool, um, whatever it might be. But um, <laughs> what I didn't realize was I was only nice to the people in the company that I was working with and anybody else, I was a jerk. Mm -hmm. But you said, when did I find out? I found out when... The company hired this group called Stop at Nothing, which we jokingly called Stop While There's Something Left. Okay. I and guess. and Stop at Nothing was basically like an organizational consultant who mm. we didn't really have an org chart, um, but they put one together. And then anybody who was considered, I was 24, considered at a certain level in the organization, regardless of title, um, they did in-depth interviews with everybody in the company and I had the exclusive privilege of being considered the salvation of the advertising agency. Wow. I was the smartest person, the best person, the person who was going to take us to the highest of heights by half of the organization. By the other half, I was the devil incarnate. I was spineless. I had no talent. I was just kissing up. And I realized that day I may treat people differently. Mm. There you go. Mm. Talented you still, asshole. Do you still do that? Do you still treat people uh, differently? Just the people who deserve it. <laughs> yeah, I was waiting for that. <laughs> well, it was funny because my boss, I remember he came in and he goes, hey, we got this. Uh, I'm sure you've seen the report on how people feel about you. Oh, shit. <laughs> And There's I was a, like, it's I was about like, 20 pages. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I saw it. it, it 
I mean, you got to figure there were 40 people at this company and everybody had like at least a few sentences to say. Um, And what he said to me was, well, here's the good news. At least I know who to fire now. (laughs) Wow. And I was like, you can't do that, man. I've got to talk to all these people. But you don't really, I think, and I know we're, we're diving right in here, but I think sometimes you don't realize, you know, Mm-hmm. that you're doing that to somebody that you're being that way. But I remember somebody would come into my office and say, Hey, I need help with this. And I was like, yeah. And I need help finishing my job. So wow. I'm going to do my thing. Really? You, you go do your thing. Wow. And then we'll see which one of us is able to do our job on our own. Hmm. Hmm. I do remember saying that to somebody. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not, you're not like that anymore. No, that, that, that slap in the face of how people saw me when I was 24. So that was humbling. Oh my God. I think that was the biggest course correction of my whole life. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. That's good to go through that. Yeah. So that was good. What what, what about you? When was a time where you were a complete jerk? And if you don't have one, I got a list brother. No, but, but have you ever been through that where you just like realized at one point, Oh, I'm the asshole. I have never uh, in the moment, like like what it sounds like you, like someone showing you or like in a moment where there's enough time to like make amends. Because it sounds like you were, you were able to like, oh, shit, and let me go talk to these people or whatever. For me, it's always like, you know, months later and I think back, man, I was kind of shitty or I made some really – you know, the decisions I made were based on just me being a dick or whatever. <laughs> yeah. um, never, never enough time to go back and correct it. Um, so for me, it's always like, yes, those, those moments exist, but it's like months later and I'm like, oh shit. That's why they won't return my emails and texts anymore. Yeah. Cause they don't like me. Cause, cause I, I treated them that way. Yeah. Um, you know what? And yeah. here's the thing. When I went back and normally it was other people who did what I did, right? Like it was an account executive and it was the other account executives who I just did not have time for. It was my boss actually, who a lot of times I did not have time. Well, the one, the woman who was in charge of me, not the actual owner of the company. I only considered the owner of the company, my boss. I never considered the person I reported to my boss. And this was a problem too, but I, I pretty much met with everybody and just apologized and said, look, I was just so focused. I just thought what I was doing was so important. And obviously I'm hurting the company because I'm not sharing things that I find work and I'm not learning from others, you know, things that they've done that have worked. So it it was, let me ask you this though. Were you by your own definition, were you, when you were like that, were you successful in your role or for the company? I would say in my microcosm, I was wildly successful. I went in, I focused, I made sure that I understood exactly why something Mm -hmm. was right. I never hammered a client, but I always willed them into the the right Mm -hmm. place. I played tennis with them on the weekends. Mm -hmm. You know, I did whatever it took to be able to get that job done. But at the same time, I was creating a cultural rift within the organization, within the company of people who liked me, people who hated me Hmm. and that. So in the microcosm, yeah, I probably did what I was hired to do. I mean, I got, I got courted by national firms. So I definitely had a reputation for being able to build budgets, for being able to get clients to say yes Hmm. to all kinds of stuff, which was always in their interest too. I never Hmm. like took anybody down a bad path, even when I was an ass and but, but I hurt the rest of the company. So I think the company overall probably didn't see a net increase, probably saw a net loss because mm. I gave people bad days. Mm. And you know what it is when you have a bad day, you don't do a good job. Right, right. But, I, but I, my point was that I think- You think I should still be an asshole. I see what I you're mean, saying. You, you've got a ways to go, man. No, I think um, <laughs> we, we tend to do these things and, and make these type of mistakes when we're, when we're experiencing success, right? Yeah, cockiness, call it, man. Call it ubris, cockiness, whatever it is. That's when that comes out. That's when that monster comes out. Um, when everything's going right, and then all of a sudden, bam! You know, <laughs> something something happens or whatever, and the shit falls apart, and you know, then yeah. you're like all down, and you know, whatever. But but yeah, you tend to make the most of these mistakes and stuff whenever you know 
things are going well, you're closing deals or whatever. And you're like, I don't got time for you. You know, exactly. Yeah. I've got to, I got to close this. I got to do this. And you even get to a point where you start punching up. Oh yeah. Like people have been at the organization for a long time who are, who are responsible for why the company exists. Right. Right. And you're yet like, you convince you. yourself, you convince yourself you're why the company exists and you've been right. there for 18 months. Right. Right. Simmer down, sunshine. Yeah, this guy built this lady built this company like twelve years ago. But I'm we more didn't say, than you. Yeah, we didn't say Carl will be here next year. Let's go ahead and move into the big tower yeah. and rent out the thirty eighth floor. <laughs> right, right. Because Carl is coming, and it will oh, be okay. Yeah, sign at least, man. We got Carl. We got. Oh man, <laughs> that's awesome. God, but you know what? But at, the, at that time, and and you kind of believe it, you know. But mm -hmm. so, so one of the things when I was looking at that episode or that issue last week of the newsletter, sign up for the newsletter, kids. It's fantabulous. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Gene. Um, Bennett Tepper, I think Bennett, Bennett Tepper. Mm -hmm. um, Bennett sounds cool, but I think mm -hmm. Bennett's probably his yeah. name. Well, um, he did all this research on, uh, it was more on managers that were jerks, mm -hmm. right? And he coined this term, um, abusive supervision. And basically he said, these are, this is the impact. And I think it goes beyond that. Um, and I, I, I don't, I think what he was doing was researching what you could, if, if you have an employee who is abusive, well, yeah, right. you might not be able to define it as easily or whatever, but to me, it was the, the exact same. So I kind of looked at what he had, he researched, what other people said about what he did. Um, and then just my own experiences, but I think when you start to look at it, just like you asked, when you have somebody who is a complete jerk, even if they're really good at their job, mm -hmm. it just derails everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. You worked with yeah. a jerk before you had a, a jerk in the, in the mix. Uh, yes. Um, yes. <laughs> Talented yeah. people. Um, yeah, it, it can run the gamut between like like super talented people who, you know, their opinion can never be wrong to the people that, you know, their ideas are always the best <laughs> to to the people that have, you know, they've had success for a long time. And then like we're, we're never doing anything any different than the way I do it. And if you if you think your way is better than mine, then screw you. You know, I'll just ignore you or, or make you feel stupid or whatever. Because they um, were threatened, right? Probably. Yeah. Probably is the case. But, you know, we've it downright, uh, you know, grouchy ass individuals. <laughs> mm. But those are easier to spot. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. And then and then if you've got if you've got that cranky person, you right. And 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 that's the thing. Sometimes they're super personable mm. and two faced as hell. Mm-hmm. And that's the other one, right? It's mm -hmm. like you get this person who's, I mean, we've had developers that we worked with that whoever they reported to, they were the mm -hmm. nicest, you know, basically mm -hmm. following kindergarten rules, always great, but refused yeah. to work with anybody else. Right. Or just you know, lord it over everybody with the keys to the kingdom or whatever. Yeah. Little oh, I'm going to get it done. Yeah. Right. Or they always tell you it's going to take twice as long. All right. And then they miraculously figured it out. <laughs> how to do oh, it. Yeah. <laughs> you know That's what I mean? It's like the, the there's old, always. I've actually coached people to, to utilize the Scotty principle. Uh, you're familiar with this, right? Like Scotty from Star Trek. It's like, okay. I, I, didn't, I didn't think it was the dog. <laughs> it's the Scotty from Star Trek. Oh, where, right. Where, where Kirk's always like, I need more. And Scotty's like, dude, this is. I, this is all she's got, you know, whatever. And I can't do like, it, Captain. Yeah, I think she's like, going to blow. He's like, give me a second. I shoved the wiener in the warp drive. Yeah. Everything's fine. <laughs> then suddenly, you know, 30 seconds later, it's like ready to go. And he could do it at any time. He could. He just needed that pressure. <laughs> yeah. But but when you've got that person who does that, and um, I remember we had a developer that, you know, everybody's like, we've got to knock down the silos. Mm. Some people like silos. Yes. And while you're trying to break them down, they're all cask of amontillado, building them back up around themselves yeah. so that you, they, they just don't want to work with a team. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because now uh, this article came out in the, um, it was shared in the Bureau of Slack channels. I think it was a Wall Street Journal article about people who were holding down two full-time jobs. <laughs> you know, I just saw, a, yeah, it was in the Slack channel. I saw that. 
And I was like, bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that's well, why. <laughs> I mean, it's like, okay, so somebody said, well, it's it's really two 15-hour-a-week jobs. Mm-hmm. And they're like, is it? Mm-hmm. Or, and is it really happening as much as the Wall Street Journal saying? Or did that just seem like a really sexy article to put out there? Mm-hmm. Lots of clicks. <laughs> but when I looked at it, I mean, I remember people who – you know, this is a different kind of asshole, but they just, they <laughs> lie, right? They like say it's going to take longer and then they just don't, it doesn't or whatever. But, but this is the thing. It's like, so yeah. then it had this like 15, uh, list of 15 things to determine if somebody is abusive or not. And all of them are pretty straightforward, obvious mm-hmm. ridicules others, tells teammates their thoughts or feelings are stupid. Right. right. <laughs> you know, oh, Lots of hard research in this one, Mr. Tepper. Well done. But but the thing is, um, I don't think anybody realized his real research wasn't the list. The list gets put out there all the time. It was the overall impact in the company that one person can cause up to 20% of the team to leave. I believe it. Yeah. Yeah. I believe it. I've seen it. Yeah. That's when, uh, when bad people stay, good people leave. Mm-hmm. And the cranky clients thing. Um, yeah. It, it's it's weird, like when someone's left your your company, and then like you kind of make the rounds back with your clients, and they're like, "Oh, they're gone." Mm-hmm. Whew. Like we yeah. did not like that person. I'm so glad we were going to fire you guys. <laughs> oh, <laughs> You're like, <boy. laughs> well, and sometimes it's that person. So sometimes that person, because of who they are, they get elevated externally, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? So they may have. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah blogs that they're writing, or they may be speaking at events, or they may be, um, you know, publishing videos, or they may be Mm -hmm. the number one, this type of developer in the world, or they may be, you know, publishing this kind of content that all the other developers are just crazy about. Um, And clients go, we want to work with that person. Mm -hmm. And then they meet that person. Mm -hmm. Right. And they're like, I don't want to work with that person. Well, that's the person who can do the thing that you wanted. So you feel you feel like you're on the hook. But I, I'm going to tell you, there is a, a type of asshole worse than the untalented. Oh, I blew it. <laughs> Rewind that. There's another type of asshole worse than the talented asshole. Do you know mm-hmm. what kind, Gene? <laughs> uh, you want to guess? The untalented asshole. The untalented asshole. Man, I just blew that. But you know, those exist too. The people who everybody's just like, I'll deal with it tomorrow. You know, they right, don't, right. for whatever reason, they just that's, hang out. That's probably me, honestly. No, you're <laughs> not an asshole. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I get you, man. Yeah, I've had some of those, too, that just, like, mm. can't really do the things that they claim they could do. I will say this, too, about the other, uh, not not maybe maybe unintentional asshole. Okay. You, were ref- you, were referencing, <laughs> you were referencing, uh, like, industry like industry famous people or whatever. Yeah. I've, uh, they shall remain nameless, but I, yeah, I'll remain nameless, but um, you and I not famous by the way. No, no, never worse. Just uh, acknowledge that. So I had this client reach out to us, sing this person's praises. Like we've been working with this person. Everything they've done is golden. It is awesome, but it just doesn't work. Could you guys just take a look at it? and like fix this little bit. So we're like, cool. And we take a look. We're like, man, I'd like to come behind this person, take a look at it. And we're like, the reason it doesn't work is because there's nothing here. It's all fake. <laughs> and just having to tell that, that client that like, well, you know, all the, when you build an app and there's like all the stuff, all the programming yeah. that should exist, you don't have any of that stuff. So we're going to coin a new term. <laughs> That's the untalented sweetheart. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They couldn't do it. Yeah. And just built a prototype. Yeah, exactly. And we're said, like, yeah, uh, we just have to hook up the data now. I'm going to take six weeks and head out to Mexico. I'll see you later. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Oh, my yeah. goodness. So what did you do? How did you respond to that person that asked you to, to check up on them? Well, I called... Well, I called the, you know, the person in question and, you know, just said, hey, you know, what's the real deal here? <laughs> what's going on? Yeah. And they fessed up and then, you know, we helped them. We did it fessed up. Did they say, I don't know what I'm doing? Yeah, pretty much. Oh, my God. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, we didn't throw them under the bus and we we work with them and 
it all worked out, but <laughs> it was, <laughs> it, we were you like, just think how hard could it be? Yeah. But we were like, you're an asshole. Like you took this. And, and that's what I mean by the unintentional. Was asshole. there any money left for you? That's the worst. Not, a, not as much as we wanted. Yeah. Oh, well, we already gave the person who didn't yeah. do anything all of our money. So could you uh, do this kind of as a favor? I know. And actually build the thing we paid them to do. Yeah. I've done that too, but, but it's the person and, and you, you know, if you're working in a larger organization, you'll probably see this where there's this person and maybe they're in charge, maybe they're a manager or whatever, and they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> you know what I mean? But you are sort of under them or you come behind them or you work on the things that they then go take credit for or whatever. And they're not like, they're not bad people. Like this person, I mean, this was a great, like good, a friendly person, like, you know, somebody you'd love to hang out with. Um, couldn't say really anything bad about them other than, you know, than they just couldn't do what they signed up for. But, but the, you know, and, and there's a fine line between like, like I, you know, I came up as a graphic designer, self-taught web designer, whatever. There's a level of like, yeah, I don't know how to do that, but I know how to figure out how to do that. So yeah, I can take this on. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And you'll just get it done if you have to stay up all night and learn something new or whatever, but you get it yeah. done. There's, there's part of that. But then there's a level of that that's just like too far where it's like, yeah, but you can't learn Python in 24 hours. You know what I mean? Like, it's just too much for you, you know, and you got to know when, when like you're outclassed or, or just not, should not be doing the job or whatever. I can figure it's, out how to build heat resistant tiles. Yeah, exactly. This isn't going to be an issue. Yeah, those astronauts will be okay. They'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. No, you're right. I, I mean, we, we worked with somebody who I would say was a talented misfit. Yeah, there you go. Not necessarily an asshole, but the, the, end result is, the end result is asshole. Who learned Pearl overnight. Oh. He was like, you know, I think Pearl would be a better solution for this. And I walked in the next morning and he's asleep with his hand on a keyboard, oh, a, a working shit. model of the product and a Pearl book that's just like been demolished. <laughs> I was like, okay, well, I go get you a change of clothes, sunshine. Yeah. What's yeah, with yeah. me in the sunshines all of a sudden? I'm I don't all know. about sunshine. It's been raining in Florida, hasn't it? So much. Oh yeah. my God, so much. Thank you. That's exactly what it was. You know, there. okay, so there's another type of, I would say, dangerous person in an organization. That's a good term. You know who it is? The mascot. Oh. Hmm. This is the person who's been there forever. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> who does the caricatures. For everybody mm -hmm. on their birthday. Oh no! But can't do their job, right? And everybody just works around them, and doesn't have the heart to say anything about it. Or if they do, they do it in in closed circles because, well, they've been here forever. And who's going to do the caricatures at everybody's birthday if it, if it's not them? I just realized I'm the mascot. And they make like, you know, eighty five oh, yeah. grand oh, yeah. a year or yeah. whatever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, there, and that could be, you know, a, a great front end developer or something. And but no, yeah, we've got to make sure that that we have the mascot because they're the ones that always, you know, when it when we get together and we do our tell us about yourself thing, they always are the ones that wrote the song. Yeah, and we love it, mm -hmm. which is great. And I get it from a culture perspective, but. What does that do to the yeah. to everybody else who's, who's like actually working every day <laughs> and figures it out? Yeah. Have you ever had this is a good one? Have you ever had anybody in an accounting department or in uh, some an, other level of an accounting understanding department. or understanding the internal workings of the of the shop that tells other people what uh, everybody's salaries are? No, I've never had that, but that sounds that sounds fun. Did I ever tell you about the time I quit? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's because I, I found out they hired somebody making three times what I was using the money that I had earned for the company. Oof. I just remember going, wait, they, that, they're hiring somebody to come in to manage this client that I grew from uh, $300,000 to almost $1.5 million in two years. And now they're going to give the money to that person. <laughs> to tell me how to do my job. All right, maybe I wasn't an asshole. Maybe I was upset <laughs> for a reason. The Bob and Bob. That's crazy, man. Oh, I wouldn't say I'm missing it. Mm -hmm. Bob and Bob? 
Yeah. You've been missing a lot of work lately. Office space. Yeah. Yeah. I was. Yeah. Uh, that's, what, that's what we were doing. Uh, yeah, here. I got you. I'm sorry, man. <sighs> Roll back the tape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, don't hire assholes. Hmm. Which also was the number one link, uh, the no asshole rule, that book. Uh, I think 30% of the people who opened the newsletter like went to look at that. And, and the thing is, the no asshole rule, you would think you just look at the cover and you go, oh, got it. Don't right. hire an asshole. But um, it, I haven't read the book, Gene. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't want to be that person. But I hear there's good stuff in there. <laughs> <laughs> about why you shouldn't hire people who aren't nice. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what do you think? I agree. Um, <laughs> yeah, but the basic list here, you, you started rolling off of that. Um, yeah, a lot of this is obvious, but uh, uh, invades other people's privacy. Would that be up there with like, uh, you know, telling everybody what everybody makes? Or, or where is that oh, going? Yeah, I would think so. I mean, invades I everybody's so. privacy is like, telling somebody somebody's probably getting a divorce yeah yeah yeah. you know i mean anything like that now again th this list is more this doesn't necessarily have the talented side to it this is just the jerks right yeah. I, I, one of my favorites is when they break promises and it's your fault mm -hmm. right any anything that involves a blame game i think is classic That's yeah cool. and there's a difference there's a definite difference between uh managers like slash project managers and like production people like you know designers developers um or writers there's a there's a def, de definite difference in the level of or type of assholery that you can get <laughs> <laughs> out of these people um from my experience <laughs> well you know so I, i'll agree with you there and i think there's something else you need to um I've got another category here. The unexpected asshole. Do tell why me. did why did that person suddenly become an asshole? They've been great <laughs> for five years. <laughs> right, right. They, what happened? Where did they right. go? We had a writer that we worked with for a long time. And what was amazing was all of a sudden they weren't really good at their work anymore. Mm. And they were upset with everyone. Uh, we uh, we kind of switched the type of writing they were doing, and we didn't realize that there were different categories. It sounds really silly now, but we took them from being more of a advertising, like a, a print piece or a broadcast piece, and put them into direct mail. Right. And they're like long form right. versus more creative. Not that direct mail is not creative, right. but right. you know, and um, they just hated their life all of a sudden, and we were like, I don't know might be time to go what's wrong with you <laughs> might be time to go what about the what about the quiet person right have you ever uh, no i mean yeah. uh, besides period three what's the largest i mean period three is not huge but what, what's the biggest group you've ever been a part of with iron yard yeah that'd be the biggest they had like i don't know 200 250 100, employees hundreds yeah um, hundred. did you have people in there that you were just like i don't want to sit down and be in a meeting with that person yes yeah, <laughs> most, all of them. Most of them. <laughs> but were, I was were you looking the in the asshole. mirror? Were you looking yes. in the mirror when you oh, said yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. I don't want to have a meeting that I'm in. No, <laughs> that's definitely. Terrible. Yeah, that's definitely one of those scenarios I was talking about earlier, where like a year later I was like, I was a dick. Yeah, and I shouldn't have been. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I was. I was very aloof and and not right, and it caused problems. And um, yeah, some of those people probably won't be friendly to me ever again. But um. I mean, they're, they're all very nice people, so they probably would be, but like, yeah, you know, um, in general, probably not really going to be my friend, you know? Well, you've got enough friends, Gene. Thank you. I only need one. Um, yay! But that, yeah, the, there, but there were definitely people that, um, you know, the, like the, you know, all this, all the things on the list, the manager type doing those things yeah. that I was like, I don't want to be part of that culture. Um, but, you know, it's different. There's also like, like you're talking about an established agency that's been around for a while that you're part of and you're doing things in versus yeah. like a startup that's only been around for like a year or so. Um, there's lots of stuff that can happen, like people just being in a hurry and making mistakes and then yeah. how they deal with those things. Um, 
it's different types of assholes, maybe. Um, well, and even agitators versus assholes, right? Yeah, because you have a term, anytime you have a startup, you have to have. Um, I'm trying to remember the uh, the terms that I I saw for this uh, volatiles and stables. So you yeah, have like to that. have. Otherwise, you have no reaction. If you only have stables, you have no reaction, right? Mm -hmm. You have to have a volatile in there to make things happen. But eventually, things get to a point where you need the stables to take over and the volatile has got to take a hike, hike because you got there. You're at the point where yeah. things are established now and they're going to work. That's right. That's right. So that, that's a good point, right? It's like, and again, like take Steve Jobs. He's probably the most famous asshole. Mm -hmm. If you ever read about working with him, mm -hmm. holy crap, that guy, yeah. right? But he kind yeah. of accomplished a few things. <laughs> so, a few things. But that's the volatile. And then, you know, you get him out, you get Cook in. Okay, Cook's definitely more of a stable. He's not mm -hmm. He's not going to be bouncing all over the place, yelling at people, telling them they're doing it wrong for even looks at what they did. Right. Um, so that's, yeah, that's kind of crazy. But they haven't exactly invented anything new since Jobs has been gone. You know, it happens. Mm -hmm. But but to your point, like, uh, there's definitely a difference between starting something and maintaining something, right? Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And definitely. I think, I, think um, I don't know, I've ne like in terms of, design shop or a shop or whatever, you know, we're calling them in the bureau. I think um, there's a difference between maybe the people that start the project versus the people that maintain and finish the project, you know, like that, yeah, that type of person is very different. And that's a, that's a tough area, I think, to manage between maybe the biz dev account rep person and then the people that like take it to the finish line, you know, and, uh, how you how you keep the those two types of people in the mix throughout the process so that the biz dev people are aware of what's going on so they can do more biz dev but then the people can actually get it done and build it those temperaments yeah. are different yeah very different and you know it's interesting too because what you're saying there about building something versus maintaining it we're in a creative space so people are going to have their ego involved if they mean to or not mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. can elevate it. You know, another another uh, thing now that people are working more remotely, sometimes people think, well, I get that that person's not the nicest, but we don't have to hang out with them. You know mm. what? They're still going to be there. Yeah, maybe you're not going to hear them munching chips at their desk, but they're still going to be on the call. They're right. still going to be involved with the client. Mm -hmm. They're still going to say things. Yeah. Like, you can throw somebody under the bus from 100 miles away. It's not tough. Yes. Yes. I do it all the time. <laughs> I do it too. <laughs> we'll show you my technique at some point. Gene, we're, we're coming up on time. I don't know how that happened. There's nothing mm, more fun talk than about talking, about, talking about assholes. Ooh. Everybody's got one. Nope. Nobody wants to. <laughs> I mean, okay. Yeah. And if you can guess how many times we said the word asshole, you get to sign up to be a member at the Bureau. Love I'm it. gonna give you. I'm gonna give you a free month. Whoever says yeah. the right number of times we said asshole in this episode, yeah, yeah. asshole, that one counts. Um, yeah, whatever. I'm gonna give you a free month of membership. How you like that one, Gene Crawford? Yeah. Give him a free newsletter. It's not something a jerk would do. I'll tell you that. It isn't. That's pretty awesome of you. Yeah, sign up for the newsletter. Count yeah. the assholes. <laughs> yeah, you won't believe the number of assholes it takes to become a member at the Bureau of Digital. All of those assholes count too, by the way. They do. <laughs>